Hello everyone, welcome to my studio. I'm Robin McClendon and I'm excited to share this process with you. It's a combination of a few of my favorite techniques and using several of my favorite supplies and paints to use in my studio. And so what we're gonna do, we're gonna do some jelly printing uh, and then to a finished art piece, a uh, collage um, that we'll work through. So let's get started and I will begin showing you exactly what we're gonna be using. So we'll be using the 8x10 jelly plate, um, our brayer, and I keep my things a little dirty. Most of you who follow me know that. But I get a lot of yummy stuff that comes off of my plate for it not to be too clean. And actually, this is a very clean plate for me, believe it or not, to get started on this process. I'm going to be using alcohol. It's just going to be good old fashion rubbing alcohol or isopropyl alcohol. I know in different countries it's called different things and I don't always remember what it's called, but it's actually like a rubbing or a massaging al alcohol or first aided antiseptic. You don't want the highly flammable stuff that you use, that you use in printmaking and things like that. You want one that's safe, um, you know, to use on your body because it's a, it's a first aid antiseptic. Okay, so we'll be using that. I like to put it in a little spray bottle so I can spray it, but we'll also be using it to make our paint mixture. We'll be using a Blick, the matte acrylic. Any matte acrylic paint will do, but generally your matte or your chalk paints. Your chalk paints work really beautiful for this process as well. Anything that doesn't have a lot of binders in it, because we're going to be mixing it with alcohol, and I know that's oftentimes a big no-no. You never mix acrylics and alcohol, but you do if you want to have different effects. And this one is going to be really a beautiful etheric effect. We'll also be using Seth Apter's eye zincs. We're going to be using the gold mine and um, the antique pearl. I love, love, love these. These are just my go-to um, spray dyes. And also the Tim Holtz. Love the distress stains. Who doesn't love Tim Holtz Distress Products. Um, I'll be using Tattered Rose, Tea Dye, and Bundled Sage. So, because we're going to be working with different colors. So, um, that's the palette I'm choosing. And a bowl and a paintbrush. And this will be for mixing our paints. Now, I probably will sneak in my Iridescent Bronze from Golden because I always seem to use gold in my artwork. This is some acrylic, I mean, I'm sorry, this is um, archival <laughs> tissue paper. So just, you know, you can use any tissue paper, but the archival is acid free and all that good stuff. It is stronger and I love using this. And then we'll also be using some watercolor paper just to get a really nice stiff um, surface for us to begin our printing on. And that's basically it. I also have my Posca pens here and I will probably use the black one for some mark making in this print and possibly the ivory one. So if I go to reaching for pens, they're the Posca pens and they're going to be in the neutral shades. I think that's everything. So we'll be back with the start of this. The first thing we want to do is mix our paints. So I'm going to take and put probably about a tablespoon of the matte acrylic in my bowl and about the same amount but I start off slow with the alcohol and you start mixing it because you don't really want it to clump. Now the chalk paints and the matte paints because they're low in acrylic binders they have a tendency not to clump if you're the only thing you have is you're just your regular acrylic paints, fluid acrylics, or your heavy bodies. You can use those too. Just start off by putting a little bit of water in them. So if you take a and put a little bit of water like I've just done, that'll help start mixing them around and breaking the binders down a little bit so that when you do put the alcohol in it, it, will, um, it won't clump the same. So I want a nice kind of loose, maybe like, buttermilk you know it's really not going to drip off of the brush um, consistency for this project so we have that mixed now 
So we're going to start with the backgrounds first. Basically, I just use my paintbrush to just paint on a bit. And then I'll spray a little bit more alcohol on it because I really want this to be loose. And then we're going to just brayer it out onto the, the surface. I'm using a sheet of paper that's um, smaller than my plate. And I'm just doing that on purpose because I want a full to try to get as much, you know. Now I'm spraying a little bit more alcohol because I, I really want this to be slick. And you'll just, you know, you'll play with a few of these backgrounds and you'll you'll um, kind of get a feel for what you want to do. Now let's get Tattered Rose. So I go right to with this background. I also will spray this is such a nice subtle color. I'll just spray right onto the surface with that and we'll get a little bit of the the Seth after eye zinc and then you just want to lay it down and it's going to basically kind of move around underneath there almost like a watercolor which is what we want to see and we'll remove it and then we have our first background. Very etheric, just beautiful. And we're going to set that down to dry. And what I like to do um, with the extra paint here is I'm going to rub it off again. You know, just kind of brayer it again. And then spray some more so it really gets a nice stone pattern. And I just take a piece of tissue and put that down. Because all of this we can use. <laughs> when it's dry, this just becomes great collage material. There's no need to waste that paint. So we just will get some nice surfaces of extra color to work with. Okay. Good enough for getting the plate clean and we'll do it again. So we're going to make a few of these backgrounds just so you can kind of see the technique. Spritz it again with some alcohol. Go ahead and roll it out. I love this because it and on the watercolor paper, oh, it just makes such a beautiful. And we want that stoning pattern to happen. So let's use some bundle stage now. And let's use a little bit of um, tea dye. And that stoning that happens, that's good. We want that. So just really let it sit down there for a while and absorb into this watercolor paper. Now, if you're not using watercolor paper, or you're using a slightly thinner paper, then you don't want to sit, you know, you don't want it to stay down as long. If you start seeing, once you see it absorbing through the paper, you can go ahead and remove it because you don't want it to stick to the plate. But this is a pretty thick watercolor paper. I'll, I'll look, I'll check the, the, um, the pound because I didn't tell you that earlier. Oh, look at that. Just beautiful. So these make m amazing backgrounds for um, you to be able to uh, start working and collaging on top of. So this is a lot of times that I'll do, I'll just have a session where I'll just make these backgrounds and have them. So when I'm ready to collage and work with my other materials, they're ready to go. All right, just to check, the paper that I'm using is 300 GSM. So got a nice bit of weight to it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this down there because you can also work with the colors. If you have extra paint you can work with it. So we're going to brush some more on the top. We're going to just start 
So sometimes I brayer it in sections, just showing you different ways to go about this. Start with, get a little bit of alcohol down there. And now I'll brayer up to mix this bottom color so I can still kind of keep that, that two-tone going. And I did also reach for my gathered twigs. I love this color. It's kind of like a brownie green or something. It's just the best. So since I had that green down there, this was a good one to reach for. So I'll get my paper here. Put that down. You don't have to um, use, get you know, get a full sheet going like this. Oftentimes, I will also just kind of create within so on a larger sheet on the 8 by 10 I'll just kind of create within the space of the plate and then pull it and leaving the, the white around the edges and that works beautifully as well so there's a lot of ways to go about this um, just to kind of give you options so so we'll do one more and then we'll let them dry. Oh, see that? Just they're just beautiful. They're just so much like a landscape. And um, I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull that on top of our paper we have here because I want to not have it. I want to brayer more paint down, and I don't want the um, the white to get muddied with the with the brown I just put down there. So these will be good to work on. And it doesn't hurt to get a baby white or tissue, whatever you're using. And let's just just wipe a little bit of that that brown off so that it won't make my white too muddy. Because I really want to kind of keep the top, you know, white. So I very rarely clean my plate during a session. But I sometimes do when I know that I want my technique to stay consistent. Okay, so let's do this again. There's one I'll have to grab for too. Seth Apter's Licorice. I love this one. It's... It's not a black. <laughs> it's not a purple. It's a really amazing color. It's sort of like a, a it's it's called licorice. And honestly, it's like it, like licorice. It's black with that bit of purple in it, like maybe a really deep aubergine or something like that. Like really deep, like blackish. But you can see the purple will come up in it. So you see I'm gonna spray this. We start getting that stoning pattern which is what I want because I really want to break up the surface and make it like really like you know watercolor so we'll do it again now let's get the eyes ink I have a tendency to spray at the bottom, but of course you can spray anywhere along this. Ugh. Such a nice color. You see it, it pops up in there some, which is good. Just really pushing these edges down so you know you get nice full coverage. Okay. Look at that. And I just love the movement of the paint underneath here because this is where you sort of get a lot of unusual shapes happening that really are reminiscent of sort of a landscape. So let that dry and 
take that same piece of tissue and let's just pick this up because this piece of tissue becomes background for um, just collage you know it's great for to use um, as torn bits and pieces you know for collaging so I, that's why I really like to clean my plate with the tissue paper as well and I print on it too but it just makes a really good way to clean the plate get a lot of this yummy paints off and then have something that you can still work on top of and use as um, collage material Alrighty, we will be back once our prints dry. Okay, so now our papers are all nice and dry. We have these four really beautiful backgrounds. You can just see how beautiful they are. This is that yummy um, Tim Holtz in the gathered twigs it is. Such a nice kind of brown green color. This is a tattered rose. And this is the bundled sage. Okay. So now what we're going to do is go on to the next part of this process. And we're going to do what I call fragments. So we're going to make some fragments using tissue paper. So I'm going to use not only the piece that I was sort of off printing on, cleaning the plate, but then we'll use a fresh one. So I call this fragments because it's just a great way to put a lot of different, um, let me just use a, um, just grab one of my, palettes here. So it's a good way to kind of get shapes and um, repeat patterns, you know, things that I like to use in my work in a repeat pattern type of thing um, on some very translucent paper that can, that can act like collage materials. So I just kind of take some of my go-to shapes. Um, and let me see. Looking for my little do these first we'll pull these so I just lay a piece of tissue paper down let me make sure that I have enough on these okay so we'll lay a lay piece of paper down so what's nice is this paper the tissue paper being so thin that it'll disappear so when you want to use it as a collage material it's amazing how um, the layer will almost disappear on the finished piece of work. And I love using this golden um, iridescent bronze. It's such a good color. It, it really has a lot of nice pop to it. And um, let me just get... Looking for one of my... So let's do that again. And we'll do it on, um, we're going to do it on the other paper. So I'll just repeat that. Like you can, in your go-to shapes. I love these. I call them like my Southwestern crosses. I love those. <laughs> Just want to leave enough space so that when you um, pull it 
pull the paper, you have enough room to tear around it. You'll see. Sort of making these smaller shapes. Okay. So let's get this. And um, and it's nice when you use the tissue paper that you've cleaned your plates with in the process, like I showed you how we did these. Um, you're picking up a lot of the same colors that are in your backgrounds. So, you know, you could pull from these and be able to use things that will match your um the papers the backgrounds oh this looks so good i'm just gonna sometimes i'll come in and touch these up i'll show you another thing that i'll do is um using the brush just kind of touch them up so that like in some of these areas they were a little probably could have used more paint on the plate but if you just do a, little, a really light touch up you don't mess with the 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 model print look of of them especially not on the tissue because it's it's already so thin you're just kind of filling in some of the spaces so if that does happen don't hesitate to take your to take your don't hesitate to take your brush and kind of fill them in Okay, so that looks good. So we're going to let these dry. Okay. And then um, we'll let these dry. And then we'll come back, select one of... Might work with this one. I love this with the gold and I like all the colors that we can pick up. So maybe we'll use this one as our our background, but you know, to do our finished piece on. You can already see how nicely that's gonna be coming together. And I'll be back when these are dry. Okay, so now while we're waiting for our papers to dry, let's go ahead and grab our Posca pen. I love the Posca pens on the jelly plates. I'm going to use my small, smaller plate and I'm going to use my ivory colored um, Posca pen. It's by Uni. And I'm going to script right onto my plate. And then I'm going to print. onto the paper. So I kind of want to just get a little bit of movement. I'm using the ivory so it'll pop on that white a little bit but it'll still be a nice neutral. So Every now and then, if the ink gets a little low, you can just kind of tap it. So now we're going to take this, kind of get it across the top and a little bit into the um, the bottom where the where we have some color. And this is just going to add some texture, extra movement to our our print. And it'll just add to the background. So there we have it. Just gorgeous. Look at that. So beautiful. I just love using these Posca pens on the jelly plate. They really are the best. We can also, because um, I want to kind of keep this really subtle. And um, we can also add 
Let me see. Let's go ahead and pull one of these and see what I'm going to use. One of the things I like to do to get my, um, grab my water pen here. And um, I don't know if I have water in it right now, but that's okay. We can solve that by me just having a little water in to the side here. So now what the way I separate and get my images is I take a water pen and if you use it on um, on the tissue paper, it just literally tears. So easy. So I'm gonna do these three first because I'm gonna try to decide whether or not I want them to be sort of like in a, <clears throat> in a line. I haven't decided what I want my images to be, so. So I may want this with the, um, sort of like that. So with the three images in a row, it's kind of what I had in my mind's eye when I was working with this. Let's see if I want to flip it. Or we can try different things here. Let me see. Do I just. You never know till you try stuff. So we'll just try things. Especially when you get to collage and you have to have some options. So we could go with the cross. I, don't know, I think that I like this. I think just taking up more space is nice. So I think what I want to do is I want to do some of the scripting along the bottom. So I'm going to get my Posca in the fine, um, which is the same width that this one was in. And so I know what I'm going to do. Let's go ahead and glue this down. You know, you got to work it as you go. Let me just go ahead and glue this. I'm going to use my Uhu glue stick. I love working with this one, especially on thin papers. It really does a nice job. And because this is on tissue paper, it's going to go a little translucent, but we have color down here. But um, it's going to really still pop. Let's take it. Something like that. Looks pretty good. And so using this, it's amazing at how much this is going to look like the jelly printed surface. Because you really can't see where you've put that tissue paper down. That's what I love about it. <clears throat> so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back again. So I'm going to make the scripting be kind of a fundamental part of this this design. So let's do some more. So I think I'm going to take that. So I'm going to flip it upside down so I can sort of place it. Try to place it above the these circles as best I can. <laughs> okay, perfect. So see, so you get that. So now we got that mark making over top of those circles, which is just gorgeous. 
and um, it just all, you know, just just still becomes so part and integral to the print. And then what I'm going to do is let's do, I'm going to kind of give it some more weight. So I think I'm going to do black along the bottom. So what we're going to do, so I'm going to, I think I'll do my graffiti scripting to go along with the, the Asian. And my graffiti kind of reminds me of um, Basquiat. I remember seeing his graffiti in New York in, in the village in the 80s. And I'm telling you, if I had known, that was before he even became famous, but oh boy. But I pulled down some of that um, things that I saw hanging off, you know, because he used to do it on, um, let's do it like here. Let's try it right there. You know, he used to do it on walls with um, like, what do you call them? A playbill and stuff, you know posters and advertisement and things like that and so you know in New York they would just keep on gluing that stuff up and then it'd start peeling off after a while and he'd have Samo on it boy but oh yes this is really the gods are with me today look at that say so you just get this really beautiful scripting and we you know, we're just able to layer it and you even come back on the plate and, you know, putting um, some acrylic over there, that's going to pull. But I really, I really like this. So this is, you know, um, I think the one thing I'm going to do is I have this red. For some reason, I just want to put some red up top. So what I'm going to do... I'm going to try to get this thing centered. Let me just, one of the things that we can do is I can, this is about the same width of this. So if I kind of put this up, okay, just kind of figure out where I want it. And I'm just going to do my scripting right here. Okay. That I know from side to side, this is going to be good. So, alrighty. Ah, perfect. Look at that. Oh, and it looks like sort of looks like the crown of Basquiat. I think I just channeled Basquiat, you all, with my graffiti. As he used to always do a crown and put Samo on it. So, yeah, this is homage to Basquiat, <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> oh, boy, I love it. That's just amazing that it hit right on top of the, the circle like that. So, there we are. That's how I take care of doing a, um, you know, so a few techniques where we make the background. Um in this particular way using alcohol it just makes these really beautiful very harmonious i'm very rich you get a lot of tone and what have you in it um, and then using my um what i call fragments this technique along with doing it either on paper that is um that we've sort of cleaned our plate on. So we've got a lot of these colors. Like you can see how gorgeous when I go to do this collage, how beautiful that circle would be right there. Oh, that would just be amazing. And, um, and then coming back and using our Posca pins directly onto the plate and then um, pulling it, you see this really wonderful monoprinting quality 
to the lines, but because they're um, the Posca pens are acrylic, they really just work into the acrylic paints nicely. They come off of the jelly plate, no problem. You can just keep on pulling layers of this with paint. And, and then we have our, our fragments technique there. So you can also, you know, collage and, and do layers of collage on this. So there we have it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial with me this month. And as always, I am so happy to share this technique. I love, you know, I love jelly printing. You all know that. For those of you who know me and those who don't, you get to know me. Um, I really do. And so happy to be a part of the jelly printing, jelly arts team and be able to bring these techniques to you from my studio to yours. So take care. So much love to you all and happy creating. Bye-bye.